okay um so yesterday we stopped at uh, user collection right so we are left with a uh, couple more uh, i'm sorry uh, user discovery method we have a uh, couple of other discovery methods to cover so let's get started i think this is active directory okay <clears throat> so everything clear about forest discovery and user discovery yeah i'm alive yeah so if you are clear about the discovery concepts and why we use them so pretty much everything is uh, straightforward so we use user discovery to discover users we use system discovery to discover uh, client computers or servers or workstations whatever it is and we and we use group discovery to discover security groups or distribution groups so that's pretty much straightforward what happened okay just now i deleted one of the additional f drives so <laughs> i thought i deleted the one which attached to the virtual machine fortunately no <clears throat> so that's why i'm um, surprised the config manager is not launching <clears throat> okay so let's go jump into hierarchy configuration discovery methods and now we'll cover the rest so now we covered forest discovery and user discovery now let's get started with system discovery so basically system discovery is as is what i said like uh, it is used to discover computers on the network or servers or workstations so basically the settings are very much similar so if you see here you just need to enable the system discovery then you need to browse and show it the path so the path is for us like corporate right human resources and computers is one path so i will add this and the other path we have is browse corporate sales computers so do you see like uh, arranging everything in a folder structure which makes sense uh, it is going to uh, you know uh, is the life of administrator uh, so you, you will have uh, something like this when we are configuring so it will be very easy for us to uh, select a particular ou and make some efficient ldap queries rather than putting a lot of load on the active directory domain controller or on the ssm server <clears throat> so if you look here the objects are i mean like the options are same recursively search active directory shell containers which means that uh, if you have anything any folder beneath that computer folder also if you have any folder structure under the computer folder structure also it will actually uh, discover that object and discover objects within active directory groups this is something we talked yesterday for example if you have any security group in the ou and if that security group has some computers in it so it will discover those computers as well so are we clear with these two options Yes, right. Yeah. Right. So the options are very much same as user discovery. So if you want to check this box, you can check it. If you don't want to, uh, you 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 cannot. I mean, like if you don't want to, you you can ignore that because it depends on organization to organization. If you feel like if you have security groups uh, that hold computer accounts. so probably you can check this box if you know very uh, very good about your organization uh, hierarchy and how what kind of uh, you know what kind of policies they follow and all all those stuff if uh, so if you can check this this is not going to make any kind of an issue for us so that's fine so now we <clears throat> we enabled the ou for I mean like we enabled the discovery method for uh, client computers workstations or servers so next the polling schedule is still the same so the full discovery runs 7 days and the delta discovery is uh, incremental uh, update runs every 5 minutes so that if you add a computer after the full discovery is run so it will be discovered in the next 5 minutes if you add another computer after some time it will be discovered uh, immediately after 5 minutes when the check when the check runs 
<clears throat> and the similarly we have attributes that uh, act, um, in SSEM generally pulls. So these are the attributes. If you are uh, having any additional attributes, for example, I don't think there is computer name here. So if you want to pull any additional attribute like display name or computer name or whatever it is, the operating system type, operating system type. Okay. <clears throat> physical delivery office location which means like hyderabad or mumbai so whatever the office location is operate what is the operating system uh, uh, uh what is the version of the object so these kind of things if you would like to add you can add it add a, a i mean like a do it and add here so that additionally along with this attributes that sscm pulls it will pull these attributes as well so <laughs> So these these two things we don't really require. So it says that uh, this option says that only uh, pull computers uh, which are on the network in the last 90 days. So for example, if someone did not log on to the computer for 90 days, so an administrator can assume that uh, that machine is no longer in use or no longer in network. So that is not the case every time because we will have some kind of uh, scenarios where the user is on a maternity leave. So she is not logged in for a couple of months. So there will be other scenarios where is on an emergency leave or stuff. So the user is actually not connected to the network. So so if you want, you can check this box. So if the machine is not on the network since last 90 days, so this particular uh, that particular machine will not be pulled during the polling and this this is also same uh, i mean this is also the same uh, i mean like the same as uh, option as previous but it has some kind of a uh, uh, change in the way it actually polls so it says only discover computers that updated their computer account password in the given period of time so you know right normally what happens like user account password expires like um, uh, similar to the user account every 90 days the user will change the password similar to that a computer which is joined to the domain will have a password stored on the pdc emulator and that particular policy i mean like uh, that particular password will get refreshed uh and like based on the policies that you have uh, set in your domain so if you see this option it says uh, if a computer did not uh, periodically change the password in uh, last 90 days so please do not discover such uh, systems so so it kind of really depends so if these options are helpful or not because uh, different companies policies are different so so it is completely up to you whether you would like to uh, take these options or not so that's it so if you click apply and then say yes it will run a full discovery for uh, systems in the both the OUs that you have mapped okay any questions no, no, no. okay similar to that so there is nothing uh, magical here okay so this is a group discovery but uh, instead of uh, you having a sunburst icon here so normally if you go to system discovery and see you will have a sunburst icon to add and remove so but if you go to a group discovery the options are similar very much similar the process is similar but you have the button here so this is a group now <clears throat> you need to give it a name whatever the name is for example you are doing a group discovery for security group so i will give some kind of a security group name Use the default domain and forest. You can then browse it. And uh, whatever the group you want, you can give the group name here. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> so you need to provide the DN name. So the distinguished name. Uh, so we when we when we ran that uh, command, right? For example, let me just show you if I go to active directory. Come on. OK, open active directory users and computers. 
also open PowerShell. Okay, I'm waiting. It came. Okay, it came. So uh, basically, we have our groups created under uh, groups folder, I believe. Where is the groups folder that we have created? Did we create a groups folder? No, we didn't create it. No, we didn't create it. No, sure. Yeah. We created a security group now. Uh, but where did I place the security group? Uh, I think I placed it somewhere in groups folder only. No? Corporate groups. So here is something I created, I believe. But there is no group here. Oh, there are there is groups. So computer access and user access. So if I take user access, okay. So um, I can say get hyphen a group. Okay, and then I give <coughs> the name. So I should get a distinguished name, which is this. CN is equals to user access, OU is equals to corporate. So for example, if you your uh, uh, for example, your all your security groups are in this particular OU, right? So we have two groups. So similarly, if you if you would have maintained everything as per the hierarchy, right? So you can use the OU path to basically filter out the groups. So specify a domain. So we have a domain as lab.com, I believe, right? Lab.com, right? Yes. <laughs> so you can browse through the groups, for example, like uh, uh, user access, right? So groups user. So you can add these groups like this. OK. And the computer access, for example computer access okay so you can uh, actually add like this or what you can do is you can go if you have a list of groups right so you can export them all using powershell okay simply you can say uh, no simply you can say um, get hyphen ad group very easily and then and you can say search base is OU. So this is the search base. Search base is in the sense where you need to search. OK. Uh, and search base OU I can filter star, which means everything. Then what you need to do is you can export some parameters like distinguished name and name of the object and the SAM icon name of the object. So it will come into Excel. So what you will do is like there will be a list of uh, uh, distinguished names like this sorted out. So for example, I will show you what is that. So uh, you need to know a little bit of PowerShell here. Select name, sorry, SAM account name. SAM account name comma. Dis distinguished name. And you need to export it to some kind. So I will say uh, export it to C users lab account slash desktop slash groups dot txt. So in txt format, it will be not really that good, but uh, okay, export. Ex so export is only for uh, a CSV file export hyphen CSV. Now I'm using txt file. So so I need to use out hyphen file. So if I go here, see 
the distinguished names see you will get all the distinguished names like this okay if it is in excel you can properly populate every them so you, what you can do is you can copy everything okay if i open this in excel file this will be in one column this will be another column right so then i can copy all this and they can come here okay and then i can uh, click add i can paste and then i can actually click okay that's it so all the list will be populated over here so you got the point uh, how to do it yeah yeah man. okay so that is how you do a group discovery um <clears throat> security group group okay so what happens is if this uh, security group so you know you know there is something called as nested group a nested group is nothing but if this particular group has another group in it for example in this case computer access has another group called as user access inside inside this particular group okay so the membership like see in this we have two uh, computer accounts but in this we have two user accounts right so these are called nested membership nested groups nested group is a group within a group a group within a group a group within a group so we have so in this user access you can have one more group in that group you can have one more group so the, those are nested uh, so what happens is whenever you add these groups like this uh, SSEM will take the membership of all the uh, members of all the computers or the users within that particular group and uh, it will add it to its uh, inventory so that's that is how a uh, group works the polling schedule is similar and uh, the options are also similar so <clears throat> see discover the membership of distribution groups so i said to you the primary difference right why a distribution group is used why a security group is used security group is used for permissioning uh, acl right for example if you want to permission a group for access to a website or uh, application you can use security group distribution group cannot do that it can only do one thing that is delivering emails so it cannot hold security permissions it can only do a delivery of emails so if you would like to if there are any distribution groups okay for example if i go here and see my two groups are uh, my two groups are security groups i believe okay this is security group this is security group for example if i change this one to distribution group okay and i click apply yes if i click apply and then i go back here to the ssm if i am not if I'm not checking this option, these members will not be discovered. Though the group is added to the discovery method, okay, these members will not be populated via the group. You got the point, right? Because we are not actually polling for members of a distribution group. So we are only polling for a member of security group if you are uh, unchecking that option. If you are putting a tick mark there, it will also take the distribution uh, members as well. So you got the point? why we need to have this option yes okay so yeah. so so that's pretty much uh, so that's pretty much it about the options so we covered forest discovery we covered the group discovery we covered system and we covered user discovery so there is one one thing which is enabled by default that is heartbeat discovery okay uh, heartbeat discovery is primarily used for uh, if you have a uh, Windows 10 machine on which you have in installed the configuration manager client, so that configuration manager client, uh, uh, see how our SSEM will say that that client is active because it will send a heartbeat, uh, heartbeat packet to the SSEM server management point telling that hey i'm active so the heartbeat discovery is used for that so sscm and clients can communicate with each other through a, a heartbeat discovery packet so that it says that okay my client is active on that windows 10 machine so there is nothing that we need to configure here it is enabled by default so so you can if you just read the description you can configure the interval probably for example if i go to properties so what it says is <clears throat> see every one week 
So for every one week, your configuration manager client on the Windows 10 machine or Windows 7 machine, wherever you deployed, it will talk to the management point saying that, hey, I am alive, I am active. So that client will be marked as active in HSCM uh, console. If you go to devices, you will see a green check mark with the uh, next to the client, I mean, next to the uh, operating system, right? I mean, like on the next to the device, which means that that device is active. So, if you want, you can schedule that uh, particular uh, one to one day or one week or one hour, whatever, how frequently they communicate and see. So, you can change that polling schedule, but there is no other option for you to, uh, uh, there is no other option for you to actually configure over there. Any questions? So we can change that uh, control. Like yeah, yeah, if, if you think that okay, one week is very long period, I want to be more aggressive and uh, I need to get notified immediately after one day if a client is not active. So you can change that schedule to one week, one, one day. Sorry. So if you want to be very much aggressive and uh, you want to notify immediately, whenever the client goes offline so you can change it to one hour so it kind of increases network uh, bandwidth because it sends a, a packet of information to the management point saying that uh, okay i'm active so if there are a, if there are like uh, 5000 or 6000 uh, devices on your organization so there will be if you configure for every one hour so you will get almost 24 packets from one particular client so 24 into 6000 so that is somewhere around uh, 12 lakh 40 thousand packets on the network right so so you you need to architect you need to design like uh, whatever your requirement is if you have very less computer devices like uh, 100 or 200 that is fine you can configure for one hour that is fine but if you have more devices like uh, 10,000 devices then it will be like uh, a load on the network so you got the point Ah uh, yes, clear right? Clear. Okay, this thing the network discovery is not enabled on many of the organizations. Most of the organizations don't use that because it it kind of discovers the subnets, uh, DHCP clients, and all those stuff. So there is no not much because network is something we don't really want to be discovered automatically because there can be uh, conflicting boundaries and all those stuff. So the, most of the companies don't enable this discovery method by default i i believe that your company will be not uh, enabling this so most of the companies will be enabling only this four this fifth one is by default enabled so there is nothing that you can't do here so these four are the core aspects of our discovery methods discovering users in your organization discover systems in our organization discovering groups and then forest discoveries to discover any subnets and sites that you have created in your organization clear yeah, yes clear right now we have covered the boundaries and boundary groups and discovery methods let's go and see what actually we have to do with those yeah sorry yeah yeah clear, clear. okay right uh, so you guys can still see the screen, right? Ah, yes. yes. Sir. Okay, let me just check one thing. Okay, fine. So, so why did we do discovery methods? We do we did discovery methods to discover objects within an organization. So primarily, SSCM is used to deploy software updates, packages, applications, operating systems, right? So that is what uh, where we aggressively use SSCM for most of the companies use SSCM for the same thing or in some companies they manage uh, the mobile devices the windows in tune kind of thing and uh, they will do some kind they will use it for reporting reporting and all those stuff are additional uh, pre I mean additional advantages that we get uh, as as we are using SSCM in our organization, but the primary use of uh, SSCM is to deploy software updates, uh, to deploy operating systems, to deploy applications and packages, and to maintain complaints. And if you are using endpoint protection, probably that is where some some something like you ensure that your clients are not 
clients are complained and not reporting any compliance issues to the whatever the security teams or whatever it is so basically that is the main and main advantage of sscm so but in sscm we don't de uh, deploy directly to one particular user so as we discovered right as we discovered as we enable the discovery method of user discovery what did it really discovered it discovered this particular users so these are the users we created if you remember yesterday right these are the users we remember uh, we created so what happened now sscm as we have enabled the user discovery it went to active directory and it pulled all the objects which are users and the, similarly if i come to devices right sscm went to uh, sscm went to the active directory and actually polled for all the information of computers that we have and we got all the client computers that we have created now so if you want to deploy a particular software to ajay kumar or mahesh or ramesh or whoever it is so you cannot directly do it for this one particular user okay so you have to do something called as a collection so you can deploy software updates or you can deploy uh, client policies or you can deploy uh, operating systems or anything to a device collection or to a user collection so what is a device collection or a user collection user collection it means that it is a collection of users so there are number of users who actually group put together and formed one particular uh, object so you are targeting that particular object not an individual user so even though if you would like to deploy to one particular user you can do it but uh, there are a lot i mean like if it is one or two three or four that is fine but if the user count increases to 50 or 100 so deploying one software to one individual is like a, a hell lot of burden so what we will do is like we target collections instead of individual users right so that is the best way of uh, doing it and uh, there are two types of collections which is user collection device collection as i said user collection is an object which holds users a bundle of users and device collection will also uh, very similar it will hold a bundle of devices instead of users it will hold devices so typically in like in uh, 2007 sscm right so we used to have uh, one collection where we can group users and devices both together in one group but uh, that is no longer uh, possible in this 2012 user collection is different and device collection is different typically in the whole days like uh, uh, the previous version of sscms user collection uh, really did not have that kind of privileges what device collection had so there are lim lim some limitations when it comes to user collection but in 2012 user collection and device collection like we both are equally important when it comes to sscm part because because of the new uh, packaging methodologies the application packaging methodologies that we have right users also have a similar preference to equal preference to devices so you can no longer create a collection which includes both users and devices in one group so the user collection has to be different and the device collection has to be different so enough about the you know theory part so let's let's like let's look at how we create collections and uh, what are the i mean like uh, different uh, ways of creating a collection or updating a collection uh, so feel. so so basically there is always one good thing that you can do right when you go to a user collections right so they, there are these are the default uh, user collections that uh, actually sscm created for you okay these are the default uh, collections so it can be useful uh, in some cases but uh, most of the administrators prefer to have their own collection rather than using the default collections so this is this is okay to start up with but uh, if you if you are act actually when you are growing when you are dealing with a lot of objects so these device collections doesn't really make any sense to us uh, because as soon as sscm discovers an object in active directory it will come and put it here that's fine it is dynamically updating the content but however we really don't want to make use of because 
make use of these particular things because we we primarily target a set of users for a particular software there are lot I men there are some re some reasons like uh, for example if your company has bought some uh, uh, some kind of complaints policy into place may, uh, and telling that uh, this particular software need to be installed on every computer so in that scenarios maybe you can uh, you can use the default uh, of default device collections right all all systems and all, and uh, but in all systems also there will be some catch like it will also discover if you go and see in devices it, is, it also discovered a ssm server right it also discovered a ssm server so there are some catches that you need to identify i mean identify before you use the default collections that's the reason why you are uh, you want to make sure that you create your own collections with uh, giving some uh, you know uh, names that make sense for example if you are creating a user collection for a particular group for a hr group maybe you can name it as an hr group collection and you can put it in a folder and now the folder part is very important so see you think that like some people think that uh, why we need folders that's fine we can directly create collections that is fine you can create collections no one is stopping you to do that but uh, the problem is as the infrastructure grows and grows and grows okay you, your collections will become unmanageable there will be lot and lot of collections and if you are not actually uh, putting it properly in a hierarchy based or organizing it properly in a folder structure what happens you will end up having a lot of connect, uh, collections in your organization and it will typically be unmanageable uh, to you know manage those collections similar to our active directory what we have seen earlier if you are putting users and computers uh, structurally in a folder wise if you are following a folder structure you are uh, you are following some kind of uh, good practices see when you are running discovery method it became easy for us but if you have one user object in one container other user ob object in other container so it will be a burden for the administrator to actually configure a lot of uh, queries in the discovery method so it is very similar to that so always create folders right and maintain uh, some uh, some kind of uh, hierarchy so that uh, what happens is like you have actually some good uh, you know uh, a good way of arranging things so now i created something called as corporate now if i want to create a collection so i can go and say create a user collection so user collection typically holds what it typically holds users mm -hmm. so i say mm -hmm. so yeah so i say sscm hr collection okay so now there is one option called as limiting collection okay there is one option called as limiting collection so this is where i want to use so for example you say that this is one collection i mean like uh, um, one collection that you created earlier and this is one collection you created earlier now we want to create a new collection okay we want to create a new collection okay for example say that this is win 8 machines and now say that this is win 10 machines and now i want to make a classification in win 10 machines we have uh, oh sorry sorry okay in, i'll go to win 8 only so so this is win 10 collection and this is win 8 collection now in vinate collection we actually have for example take a 32 bit and 64 bit machines for example okay now you are creating another collection here a new collection okay this is a new collection where you want to uh, collect only 32 bit machines of windows 8 okay yeah creating a new collection separately for 32 bit machines of windows 8 so instead of running a separate query again directly uh, if you uh, and think that uh, think that this is your all devices collection okay this is your all devices default collection okay so in this collection you will have windows 8 32 bit 64 bit you also have 
Windows 10 machines. That is all device collection, right? So you will have every collection. I mean like every device in this particular collection. So for example, if you want to create a 32 bit machine of Windows 8 collection, if you create a new query and run it, it will run against all devices and then filters 32 machines of uh, 32 bit machines of Windows 8, right? So assume that you have somewhere around 10,000 machines here. OK, and you have uh, 2000 uh, Windows 8 32 bit plus 64 bit and you have 8000 Windows 10 machines. OK, so now what happens when you run a new query 32 bit uh, machines for 32 bit machines of Windows 8? So the new query will run against all the 10,000 machines in the device collection, right? All the 10,000 machines in the device collections, and then it will filter somewhere around uh, some 500 machines or 500 machines of Windows 8. So, what happens is now you are giving, like you are taking more load and you are giving uh, more opportunity for error. Okay, because it, it has to evaluate against 10,000 computers and then pull the list of the objects that you want. But instead of doing that, what you can do is instead of doing that what you can do is you can limit the collection you can limit the collection to to windows 8 so in this particular concept we have windows 8 collection with 32 bit 64 bit if you are limiting to this particular collection what happens is instead of evaluating uh, 10000 objects you are just evaluating 2000 objects and getting the required 500 objects here into this collection so is it clear or anything that I need to explain? It's clear, right? So you are limiting the collection. You are limiting the collection to this particular collection you already created. OK, so you are actually decreasing the margin of error and uh, you are getting the required desired same output. You are getting the same output. Instead of evaluating all the devices, you are evaluating to one particular collection which already holds your required data, right? So that way you can actually limit a uh, limit a collection. So limiting collection is you are referencing to a uh, you are referring to a different collection that you have already created. But in this case, I haven't created any uh, 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 any kind of a collection here. So I can limit that to all users, right? All users will have every user in my computer. I mean every user in my organization. So I am limiting to the all user collection. For example, if you have already created uh, some kind of a collection here saying that uh, HR collection and in that HR collection you want to uh, uh, in that for using that HR collection, if you want to create another collection based uh, saying that he is a privileged user, he is a non privileged user, you can limit that collection to HR collection instead of all users. That way you get an accurate results. Okay. So I'm limiting itself to all users here. OK, this is called as a limiting collection. Now I click next. There are a couple of uh, ways of doing the collection like similar to your uh, similar to your what um, so discovery methods where you are uh, pointing to a particular OU so that it polls and gets the members. So there are a couple of ways that you can uh, actually create a collection. One is direct rule. So direct rule is static static means it will not change you need to manually update the membership every time you got the point right so if someone is added uh, in the active directory he need to be manually added here so you cannot actually uh, dynamically add so dynamically is like whenever someone actually is added in the active directory ssm whenever whenever the ssm uh, user discovery runs that particular user should be pulled pulled and put it into the SSCM console. But uh, if you are using a direct membership, if you are using a direct membership, so you are actually statically saying only these users are members. So until unless you add another user, the uh, collection will not change. So now I want to select user resources. So user resource and then you want to select an attribute of name. <clears throat> So there are a lot of attributes. This is why we pull attributes from uh, uh, from the discovery methods, right? So using any of these attributes, you can form a collection. You, I'm using name attribute here. So for example, if you don't know which name you need to select, you can tell percentile 
and hit next so that what happens it will show all the names in the limiting collection so in limiting collection you have four names so the limit so it is actually showing all the four names you got the point right if the limiting collection is hr collection it will only show two names because there are only two uh, hr uh, users in the container but if the limiting collection is all users right now so all users have four members so it is showing all the four members for example if i want to make this guy and this guy a part of this collection and hit next okay and next and that's it that collection will be i mean like uh, that rule has been applied now see there are two users with the direct rule type okay with direct rule type and then i hit next and then i hit next and close finish now what happens if i go to active directory and if i add another user where these two users exist in that particular folder only if i add another user sscm will not pull that object into this collection okay because this is a direct rule direct rule is you are telling directly to sscm only two the only two, these two members will be part of this collection no other person can enter into this collection clear yeah okay. it's like a static group Yes, static group, right? Static group will not change until you want to change it, right? So now there is another group, okay? For example, I will create another device collection and I will say this is sales. Now, for example, if I browse to limiting connection and I say uh, corporate and HR collection, for example, I'm not doing that, but uh, if we say HR collection and if I say direct rule, I'll just follow the same process again and say, percentage here so similar to what we have done here now i'm not getting four names did you see that i'm getting only two names because i am limiting myself to hr collection and in that hr collection i have only two users so only the two users are displayed here got the point that yes, is the yes, that's the theory of limiting collection so so you want to make sure if you, uh, some people will uh, uh, wrongly uh, limit their collection and then uh, worry why actually the users are not showing up. So, so now we have, see when you organize uh, your folder structure properly, this is the advantage the, you, that you get. For example, if uh, this particular HR collection is also in root collection and you keep on doing that, you need to scroll, you need to do a lot of uh, administration again. So that is unnecessary. So now I will go to all users again. And now I want to limit the collection based on a <clears throat> query. So query rule is dynamic, which means whenever some user is falling into that query, query is what you're writing a simple uh, command. You can say it like you're, you can uh, running a simple script or a command and whoever matches that particular whoever matches that particular uh, i mean like whatever the script is trying to pull whoever matches that uh, context or whoever that matches uh, the rule will automatically be part of that collection so if you are saying that uh, uh, my query rule is like uh, for example for users say that only department name is hr okay only department name is HR so that he should actually uh, uh, come into this particular collection. So for that to be work, I'll go to active directory once and then I will add department names in the attribute. Okay. So I will say department is there. Um, So I will take one particular thing, something. Uh, let's go to users. Users will have department attribute, not groups. So attribute, and I say department. Okay, department is not set. So I will set this human, or I can simply say it as HR. Okay. And I will go to this guy and I will say attribute editor. So you, you understand why we are using attributes here, right? Attributes are clear. Any questions on attributes? No, Malik. No, clear. Okay. Now I'll go to sales and I will update 
these two guys as sales in the department oh attribute editor department sales okay apply apply attribute editor department sales okay, i have uh, named sales and hr in the activity department for this to work you know right i need to run the user discovery again immediately we want to get the changes or else it will uh, poll for the next five minutes in the next five minutes it will get the changes automatically but i want to get it immediately but i want to check one thing uh, in the attributes if i have selected department here or not so that is something i need so department is there yes so i will add department so you got the point why you are using a, a additional attributes yes okay so i've added department because we want to uh, uh, create a collection based on the department uh, theory so let's go and run the full discovery method yes so then the full discovery will again actually pull active directory and it will pull that changes what happened uh, we have changed department attribute so that particular uh, attribute should be pulled now if i go back to my configuration manager and then say device collection sorry user collections and then i will go back oh i think this one actually i restarted close and restart okay so in user collection i have corporate and then i want to create a group based on sales okay this is sales sales team you can limit the collection to all users because we haven't we haven't designed anything specifically for sales yet next now i want to do a query right now i want to do a query and i say criteria add a criteria attribute reference select use i will tell you what all this uh, attribute is department okay is equal to reference one second attribute reference user resources department and is equal to user resource department department of okay. is equal to user department so query language user way sms user department equal to i think this is wrong wait when this edit query statement criteria did i cancel that completely okay edit query statement criteria so basically i'm telling use attribute reference okay so i want to create the criteria based on attribute and then i go to attribute and it is an user attribute right so i select user attribute and the reference object is department so i want to create a reference based on department attribute uh, but why this is equal to now i need to select from under so okay okay select an attribute user department department user resource department why no 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 user resource department is equal to user resource department 
I think I'm, I'm, I'm messing up somewhere, so... Operator... Attrib attribute reference... Okay, I understand. is equal to is maybe it's like no like is a wild card but still uh, and it is department one second is equal to okay is equal to department user dot department equal to sales okay okay error in query rules maybe I need to put it in uh, what? Yes. Says. I'll enter a name for this. Okay, name is sales. Okay. So I told Stelex star from. Uh, so this is. Uh, this is called as uh, a query. Okay, we are actually uh, running a query against an object, uh, a particular objects, and filtering out who matches the criteria. And SCM uses something called as WQL, WQL query language. Okay, so it is similar to a plain text of a language that we use normally. So select star. So SMS underscore star underscore user. So this SMS is nothing but your configuration manager uh, database or in um, the resources of information that your configuration manager collects and store in the SQL database. So if you run any SQL query uh, before the structure is very similar. Select star from uh, something something select star from some uh, some database or something like that reference object. So so I'm 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 re referencing uh, this particular uh, as soon as you edit the query, you will get this uh, select star from SMSR underscore user or whatever it SMSR underscore user is. We are actually dealing with user objects, so it is an SMSR underscore user. If you are dealing with a computer object or a system object, it is the SMSR underscore system something like that, right? So we are actually querying a database, right? And in this case scenario, we are querying a user database where the user department attribute where sms underscore user dot department is in user there are a lot of attributes right dot reference to attributes okay uh, there are there will be set of attributes and if you want to reference any objects for example if you want to uh, reference first name where user dot first name is equals to sales so for example if i take powershell i will tell you what is a dot is for example, if I say dollar a is equals to right. Uh, uh, for example, OK, dollar a is equals to get type and AD user. I think I need to do it on the other computer. OK, that's fine. But uh, if I if I if there is an array of I mean, there are a lot of attributes for example for for one user if there is a lot of attributes and if you want to reference to one particular attribute you will actually put a dot and this is automatically populated so this is just the query language that I'm trying to explain so you're selecting uh, from a database of users where the department of the user equals to sales okay so now now this is same you can see the schedule part here 
okay you can see the schedule part and you can also have the incremental updates incremental updates is nothing but like your delta discovery and schedule is like a full schedule the full schedule is like SSEM will uh, run this query um, every seven days and see if there are any changes and incremental update is like uh, it will uh, evaluate if there are any uh, changes every five minutes or ten minutes or based on the uh, time period <clears throat> so this is a full a full scan cycle and this is an incremental scan cycle so let's go and see what happens next and finish so if my query is uh, right uh, it should actually populate two users right because we created two users with the sales department so it should actually pop up with two users let's see Any questions so far? No, no. Malik. No. Okay. No. So One thing like... is uh, this. Uh, I don't know the query how to how they are doing. I just uh, Google it and. Uh, yes, because no, yeah, we can. Collection. Yeah, we can do that. Basically, uh, mm. what happens is there uh, like there are lot of uh, collections i mean lot of queries already there in uh, internet okay so instead of struggling you can make use of them there is nothing wrong but we mm. need to understand the underlying uh, theory of uh, how actually the query is working and if in case yeah. you want to create your own uh, query at some point of time then you don't mm. need to struggle so so my query is right so if I see okay. here in sales team, okay, so I have two members who are part of sales department. Okay, now what happens? This is a dynamic query. Dynamic query in the sense, whenever uh, someone gets added, for example, if I'm creating a new user here, okay, and I'm giving some name of uh, Arun, Arun, yeah, some yells, okay. I'm Arunel and I'm next I'm going here and giving him some password. OK, I click next finish and now I go here and uh, actually um, attribute editor and again I say sales. I mean the department. OK and i give the department name as sales now see even though it is not mandatory for this user in the uh, is there in the same container if i put it in human resource also right if i put that user in, if i created a sales guy in human resource okay i created a sales guy in human resource even though i did that my query should work and it will automatically pull the user into the sales team because why here we are not referencing an OU we are referencing an attribute so whoever matches that attribute will be part of that particular device collection so yes clear irrespective yes. of where irrespective of where the object is created where the object is stored it doesn't matter it doesn't matter as long as the object is in your limiting collection you got the point as long as the object is in your limiting collection. For example, if I go to my users and collection here, I am limiting myself to the all user collection, right? So that query, whatever I have designed will run only on the all user collection. You got the point, right? It will not run again on the complete uh, uh, active directory or complete uh, user objects in the active directory. It will run only only on the members who are part of all yes. user collection all user collection so that is the theory so if i go back and then i run again my uh, user discovery because i don't want to wait for a long time okay and then i go back and see if my uh, user has already populated not yet populated it's arun yell so i'm waiting for him to populate here 
so if i go to user collections and say all user i still have five objects it should become six why it is taking so much time i don't know refresh this one completed or no so basically uh, in such scenarios what you can do is uh, you can go back to the logs and see if the discovery is actually uh, running or not so it should be necessary um, Uh, some where is my log files? It's inside SCM logs. In SCM logs, right? Okay. Yeah. So AD user discovery is AD USR this this one. Okay. So I don't think if I have CM trace enabled here. So let me just check if the discovery has completed successfully. LDAP OU users is equals to sales found two objects. LDAP OU sales we have to and in HR LDAP OU sales DC dot lab after LDAP OU my okay. I think it is syncing but uh, assets and complaints refresh so is my object created right I saved it properly active directory Arunel is created yes Arunel. I want to see the object path is lab corporate human resources users fine it's taking some time I don't know why Just finish to search the scope. AD user discovery agent. Did we did we not? Uh, then why? One second. I want to check my query for the discovery method. User discovery properties. I point at the right who held up OU human resources. Perfect. Okay. DC.com lab corporate human resource users. Yes. Then why it is not actually this course is in. Okay. Fine. This is fine. This is looking fine. I don't know. I need to check. Arun yeah, he came. Took some time. That's it. So we should have six now. So if I go to user collections, okay, this is six. Fine. If I go to corporate and say sales, it should be three, right? Okay. So yeah, it just took some time. So, sorry. Yeah. Any questions? Nothing. 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 Right. So. No, no. Yeah. So there are other two queries which are uh, include query and uh, exclude query. Uh, but uh, I have some meeting today, so I need to run to the office. So I will stop for here today. Tomorrow we will cover the other two query types include query and exclude query and then we will uh, cover something called as uh, device collection and we will also do a device collection 
and then we will uh, complete i will i will take an uh, extra class on this saturday for two hours most probably okay we can we can ramp up it uh, very quick saturday two hours i will take the class so we can complete i mean like uh, whatever we are lacking one day right we one day we have cancelled the class so i will i will try to match that schedule on saturday i will complete as much as i can on saturday okay Perfect. today and tomorrow i have some meetings so if possible tomorrow also you can join at uh, the same time or i can uh, start at 10 o'clock that is fine whatever is uh, your uh, availability 9 9 is fine 9 is fine that's 